ok. This is a course on electromagnetic theory and any course starts with Coulomb's law. So, we start with in this lecture we are going to start with Coulomb's law law for forces between two charges. Then we are going to see how this can be confirmed that this is really true experimental verification. Third, then we are going to solve some examples for forces between two charges. And finally, in this lecture, we are going to talk about the force between a point charge and a charge distribution. This is the program for this uh, lecture and based on what we cover today, I am also going to give you an assignment where you will solve three or four problems employing these concepts. So, what Coulomb's law says is that if there are two charges point let us take them to be point charges right now. So, if there is a charge q 1 and another charge q 2 separated by a distance r and for the future because I am going to develop a notation also let us write this as r 1 2 that indicates the distance between charge 1 and charge 2. Then the force between them, the magnitude force of course, you know from your mechanics course that force is a vector quantity. The force between them its magnitude is going to be equal to and this depends on what units we are going to choose for q 1 and q 2. Finally, it is the SI units that we work in. So, I am going to write this in terms of SI units it is going to be 4 pi epsilon 0, where epsilon 0 is known as the permittivity of vacuum q 1 q 2 over r 1 2 square. That means, if the distance between two charges is doubled because of this square out here, because this square out here the force is going to become less by a factor of 4, but as I just said force is not only a uh, quantity which is has magnitude it also has direction. What about the direction of the force? Now, you learnt in your previous classes that if q 1 and q 2 are of the same sign, then the force is repulsive. What it means is that the force is going to be along the same lines as the line joining the charges and they are going to repel each other, the magnitude being the same. On the other hand, if they are of opposite signs, so let me write opposite out here, if they are of the opposite signs, then force is going to be attractive. What that means is in that case the force is going to be in this direction towards each other right. So, I hope this point is clear, but let me make it clearer by drawing this picture again. I am drawing two charges q 1 and q 2 separated by a distance r 1 2 and if the charges are the same. So, for same I am going to use the color orange if the charges are the same, 
then the force is repulsive. On the other hand, if the charges are of opposite sign, then the force is going to be attractive. How can we write all this in vector notation? So, this is a very simple way of writing it. I am going to write force. Now, I will write the whole thing. Force is a vector with the magnitude 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 q 1 q 2 over r 1 2 square. Now, if I am writing it in a vector notation, I have to denote force on 1 or force on 2. Let us write the force on 1, which I denote here by this subscript 1 here. It is going to be in the unit vector r 1 2 direction. This, this hat, this hat here denotes the unit vector. Now, you will see that let us write r 1 2 vector from going from 1 to 2. So, this is r from 1 to 2. The unit vector is going to be in r 1 2 direction of magnitude unity. If I write it like this, then you notice that force on 1 is in the direction opposite of r 1 2. So, I will have to put a minus sign out here, which I can equally well write as 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 q 1 q 2 over r 1 2 square r 2 1, where r 2 1 is the unit vector from 2 to 1, r 2 1 it should be a unit vector. You will notice that this takes care of everything, signs, direction and everything in one shot. If the forces are, if the charges are the same, then the q 1 and q 2, this out here is going to be positive and therefore, this sign gives the right direction. On the other hand, if q 1 and q 2 are opposite, this sign changes. So, let us repeat this. I am going to take two charges q 1 and q 2 and write everything in vector notation. So, let me write vector from 1 to 2 as r 1 2, vector from 2 to 1 as r 2 1. I will follow this convention all throughout. Then the force on 1 with proper direction can be written as 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 q 1 q 2 over r 1 2 square. r 1 2 square is the same as r 2 1 square times r 1 to 2 unit vector. And similarly, force on 2 can be written as 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 q 1 q 2 over r 1 2 square, which is the same as r 2 1 square r from 1 to 2 unit vector. This gives repulsion, attraction, everything, because now we have taken care of the direction. So, these are this is Coulomb's law. It gives the magnitude as well as the direction of the force. How do we check it experimentally? Did Coulomb do experiment with point charges? Are there point charges available with which you could do experiment? The answer is no. You recall that there is a similar law one knows of and that is gravitational law. And what does that say? That says that the force between two masses f, let us say the masses are 
m 1 and m 2 and this is r 1 2 vector then f on 1 is going to be equal to minus g m 1 m 2 over r 1 2 square r from 2 to 1 unit vector. This is always repulsive. In gravitation we have mass does not have a sign, but the form of the law is the same. The way one could check this law was by taking two large masses and finding the force of attraction between them. So, the force is in this direction, this is always attractive. What one could do is that one could take these masses, solid masses and measure the force between them. We will see later that this force can be written as if the two masses are concentrated at their centers. So, the force between two perfectly spherical masses the magnitude will be equal to g m 1 m 2 over r 1 2 square, where r 1 2 is the distance between their centers. And of course, the direction is attractive. So, this way all right. Can we do a similar thing to check Coulomb's law? Let us see that. So, if I were to look at Coulomb's law, I take two large masses and the easiest to charge are metallic spheres and put charges on them. Let us say I put positive charge here. Since they are spheres, in isolation these charges are going to be all uniformly distributed, if these two spheres are far away. Necessarily, charge on them is movable because that is how we charge them. When we charge them, charge moved on to them. However, since these charges are mobile, when the charges are close together, this is not going to be the situation. These charges are going to move and they are going to have more and more charges because they repel farther away than there are nearer. So, here charges repel. So, lot of them will go to the back side of the charge sphere and there will be less charge in front. With the final picture that if I take these two charges, charge spheres that the charges are going to be more concentrated here and less out here, more concentrated on the back side and less in front. As a result, I cannot really think of them being separated by a distance, which is the distance between the centers of these charges. And I do not know what this distribution is. If I do not know what this distribution is, how do I figure out how far are the charges. So, Coulomb's law cannot be checked simply by bringing two charge spheres close to each other and then measuring force between them. A way out is very interesting. The way out of this is that what you can show is that if a force is 1 over r square dependent, which we are assuming Coulomb's law is, then on a sphere, then if I take a sphere, say metallic sphere and put charges on it, all the charges will come to the surface.
with the result that there will be no charge inside a charged matter sphere. So, I state again if a force is 1 over r square dependent or if in this particular case if the electric force between charges is 1 over r square dependent, all the charges that we put on a metallic sphere will come to the surface. So, the experiment that is done to check this is precisely this you take a sphere charge it and then take a sphere outside and connect it by a wire if the charge on this sphere becomes 0, I know the force field is 1 over r square and that is how it is done and this is known as Cavendish Cavendish experiment and this has confirmed that it is 1 over r square to the degree that 1 over r square plus minus 10 raise to minus 17. So, we know very well that this Coulomb's law is really 1 over r square. So, let us see what we have established. 1 force between two charges is 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 q 1 q 2 over r square where r is the distance between them. Number 2 experimentally verified third because of 1 over r square nature of the force extra charge on a metal sphere will all come to the surface. 